College, the home of the Vancouver Volcanoes. Once again, Gary, the volcano dance was just finished up. And like I was telling you, Gary, Desiree Good, the dance director, is building up a solid program every year. And this last season, one of them actually made the Blazer dancers, Michelle Lin. And there were nine of them, other volcano dancers, who made it down to the final 40, I think it was, Gary, to get that final 16. So they were right there. Mike Koreski with you tonight on the broadcast with Gary Akiyama, otherwise known as Google Gary. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> I think that's sticking. 79-60 in favor of the Volcanoes, 323 left. And it's kind of pretty much what we were predicting, Gary. It's It's been that comfortable 19, doesn't get any lower, doesn't get any higher than 23. Been a lot of trading baskets. Who was on the block party there, Gary? Well, they're, they're playing great defense. And that turns into offense with Kit Bloodsaw. Right. Let's see if the Volcanoes get a run going. I think the crowd would like to see a dunk to set this thing off. And usually Alex Hartman has the fuse in that department. Yeah, if, he, if he's feeling it, it will happen. Yeah, he, he does how he can sky. The defense has really turned up a notch for the Volcanoes as well. The PA announcer, Kevin Clements, has said it at the same time I did, Gary. <laughs> so you know something good's happening there. Amazing. Tyner brings it up for the Volcanoes. Over to Pip. Back to Gary Muzzy looking down for Bryson McKenzie. Let's see what happens. The baby hook no good. Fighting for the rebound, but he does commit an offensive foul. Yeah, I like to see that intensity. You see Bryson was a little mad about that. Heck, we're 21 points up, and he still, you know, wants to play ball. Well, and that's the thing. The season kind of gets long, Gary, in the schedule. You can have a run of a couple games in a row where they might be 19, 25-point wins, but then you can come two or three in a row where you have a Bellingham slam come in. Oregon Waves next Friday have been notoriously good every year. So it's like you've got to keep the intensity, and, and that's the way to do it. There's only one way to play with that. Hot shots with the ball. Tony Ockpon going in on Bryson McKenzie. McKenzie goes down, but they call nothing. Ockpon gets the bucket. 81-62 in favor of the Volcanoes. And the ball goes up to Hartman. Magnuson gets tied up with Hartman. They call Hartman on a double dribble. Boy. Magnuson did a pretty good job staying with the play there. He's another guy who gets kind of emotional. Tom Magnuson, the candy man, he likes to, <laughs> he likes to keep it out there. So I, I hope he finds a nice role with the hot shots. Uh, last year with the Volcanoes, he provided some minutes off the bench. He kind of gave that spark, and he's a little bit of an enforcer. Yeah, he, he can play the game. He's an intimidating player there, and, and uh, he'll contribute to the hot shots. Uncle Cliffy in and out on that three, but the hot shots get the ball back. People are sprinting back down. Ball still loose, and here comes Pip Bloodsaw. Over to Tyner. He does have Hartman in the corner, but it's knocked away by White, recovered by Bloodsaw, who was fouled. Sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time, isn't it, Gary? Absolutely. Well, especially <laughs> when you have three volcanoes there. The odds are pretty good we're, we're going to get the ball. So, yeah. Gary, it looks like you were looking at something from this season, and, and, and talk to me. What, what do you got? <laughs> I was going to talk to you about, you talking about the Oregon Waves. You know, they had a game uh, Sunday against the L.A. Lightning. Uh, they lost only by two points, 119 to 117. And the L.A. Lightning with a lot of former NBA players on that team. And yet the, the Waves only lose by two. So this is going to be a very intense game next week. So, yes, the L.A. Lightning, they have former NBA veterans, Fred Vinson, Toby Bailey, Byron Russell, and this is a re that was a rematch between the Waves and the Lightning of last year's IBL Finals. It was a best of three, and it, all three games were played in L.A. Came down to that pivotal third game, and L.A. came away with the W. Um, with the Waves this year, notoriously the guy who, who's been their, their stalwart has been David Lucas out of Oregon State. And I, every time he comes to Vancouver, Gary, you dial him in for 38. It is so maddening. It's one of the most maddening things in this league because he shoots threes, he's under, you know, he's down low. He, he's just very skilled. And it's one of those, like, go to another league. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just because of talent, because he is so talented and uh, can play just about anywhere. Kevin Tidner for the three for the Volcanoes. Count it. It's nice to see Kevin get that stroke back because they will need that against the uh, right. Oregon Waves next week. Absolutely. And the Waves, speaking of former college guys, uh, last year Lamar Hurd played for him, also from Oregon State. 
uh, David Jackson uh, from the Oregon Ducks. Very formidable team. And uh, we played them at the Beaverton Hoop last year and lost by two points at the very end of the game. Very exciting game. Come on out here next Friday for that, folks. Pip Bloodsaw going all the way for the Volcanoes, 86-63. The third quarter is winding down. For the hot shots, it is Hassan Stewart taking a look over to Cliff White. Over to number 11, Curtis Scipio finding some action for the first time tonight. Akpon down low, but McKenzie's on him. Akpon faces up with an air ball. Rebound by Muzzy over to Tyner. Tyner's got some numbers. Kicks it over to Pip. Not quite. McKenzie wants that board, but he doesn't get it. It is controlled by Hassan Stewart. One second to go. Jordan Gregg could not beat the clock. So pretty much what we predicted, Gary. Um, I wish I could say more of the game and less of us, <laughs> but I think we're still going to be doing that. So after three quarters, the Volcanoes are 12 minutes away from winning another one. And the score you're looking at right now, the Volcanoes have been playing very well tonight. Your Vancouver Volcanoes 86. Do the Hot Shots have anything tonight, Gary? We're going to find out. The Central Oregon Hot Shots 63. We have 12 minutes to go. The Volcanoes 86, your hometown Volcanoes, the visiting Central Oregon Hotshot 63. 23-point lead, but it is the IBL, Gary. Anything can happen. And speaking of anything happening, Kano the dog is anything that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Kano the dog is, uh, he's the uh, wild, loose bogey. As he could do anything. He, he was adopted right. by your Volcanoes a couple of weeks ago. Now he's going to do some dancing to Who Let the Dogs Out. <laughs> His theme song. Who did let the dogs out? And why do we have this one, Gary? Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, no, Kato really does a good job. I mean, like he does community events, plays around with the youngsters, and is really a part of the family, as you say. Yes, thank, uh, adopted by the Vancouver Humane Society, so we do like that. And, and he can dance. Not quite as good as you. <laughs> but he could dance. So now we're looking into the fourth quarter and looking at your stat sheet after the third quarter, Gary. What's sticking out to you? What, what are you seeing? Well, what's sticking out to me still is, is the, the steals, uh, which shows that we're playing excellent defense. Um, and and the, the major players on the hot shots that normally score the big points aren't scoring them so far. So we are containing them. That's true, because this game, Chris Session is leading the way with 18 and Justin Lockhart 12. But but uh, Jordan Gregg still sitting at 6, Hassan Stewart at 6. So kind of a weird turn of events for them. Right. But for the Volcanoes, Yuskowski 16, Hartman and McKenzie 13, Bloodsaw 11, King 10, and a host of others off the bench with some very strong contributions. So it looks pretty good tonight. King also chipping in 5 assists. And Pitt Bloodsaw, four steals now to lead everybody with the steals. Well, he keeps that up. He's going to be leading the IBL, I'll tell you that. The league's leading thief. <laughs> we, can, we can call him that. The crook, Pitt Bloodsaw. At the line, he does get the first one down as well. And, and get this stat, okay? Back in 2008 with the Volcanoes, he shot, he attempted 115 free throws. That is totally amazing. 115 free throws, because the following year, 54, in the same amount, only one less game. And this year so far, 40. So he's getting to the line much better this year than last year. He seems to have found something to his game is what I'm thinking. He's, he's getting to the hole a little bit more, huh? Yeah, I think uh, uh, he's maturing with age, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> if only that was that way for us, Gary. <laughs> right. 88-65 <laughs> in favor of the Volcanoes. McKenzie with the rebound off the Greg miss. Here comes Porter Troop, that run I was talking about. Give him some minutes in that fourth quarter. Pip Bloodsaw looking over there for David Everybody King. And Troop on the wing. Cliff White guard him. Down low to McKenzie. The ball is knocked away, but McKenzie gets it back. Spin cycle. He is fouled on the play, though, from 35 on the hot shots. Chris Session. Yeah, that was a really smart play by uh, Bryson, keeping control of the ball, spinning 
and having the defender foul him. Smart. Yeah, a lot of production, a lot of productive uh, touches that he gets this year, Gary. Just very efficient with it. Uh, before, he, he, last year, he was just kind of like power, anything around that two-foot range, you know. He kind of back it down, try the dunk. But he's got a couple of things he's developed this year. Damon King with the jump shot for the Volcanoes. And Gary, I'm going to start the talk now because we've talked about the last two games. You know what I'm going to talk about, don't you? I think I do. What? Well, we're going to talk Ooh. about, well, whatever you want to talk about, Mike. <laughs> Mr. Ken Nakashima. Yes. That's what I want to talk about. He, he got a point last week. Today, he said he's getting three. Well, he needs to get into the game to get the three, which I think he will with the score 90 to 67. And Ken's been turning out to actually be a crowd favorite here when, when he gets in. Definitely. And there was a spell of rugby on the floor there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's why we weren't <laughs> calling that, because rugby is not quite our forte. And at the end of that scrum, Cliff White, not very happy with the result, which is volcano basketball. But that one, Bryson McKenzie, he was being the human mop there. He was getting very active. Uh, Gary Muzzy diving out there. Damon King getting his hands in there. And that's what the Volcanoes need, Gary, because games like this, it's one thing to do that, but you still have to put the effort forward because, like I told you, Oregon Waves next Friday, that's uh, that's a tall order. It's a, it's a tall order. Yeah, they're going to have to, you know, this game will have to keep the momentum going and play into the Oregon Wave game, which uh, I think is going to fit uh, just perfectly. And the Waves so far 0-4, but the thing is with the IBL, Gary, you never quite know when you have players coming back from overseas or what's happening. So I'm going to disregard that record and say it's going to be a battle next Friday, and you folks should be here. We have Bloodsaw kicking it back after the steal to Damon King. Porter Troop in the corner collects the ball, goes back to King. Muzzy trying to set the screen, but uh, King gets it from Bryson, and he pops the three. Another three for the Weber State products, DK Damon King. Wow, 28 point lead. I mean, it's pretty much over. I went cautiously saying that, but uh, the way we're playing with intensity, I don't see how the hot shots can get back in the game. Well, that's kind of what I'm thinking, and in, in Porter Troop going for first and 10 there. <laughs> he falls forward for three yards and also a couple of free throws. Well, that, and the hot shots are going to have to make something happen. Uh, hopefully not fouling them, but they're figuring since they can't stop the inside game, might as well put them on the line and take their chances there. Yeah, well, and then on their end, they, they just they don't have the threes tonight. I'm not sure what's going on. Hassan Stewart, just, he hasn't really attempted many. And you just kind of wonder, is he not feeling well? It's just very uncharacteristic when you see someone seven days ago to tonight. Well, when you talk about the threes, the, the hot shots are only one of 14 from the three-point line, Mike. Ooh. You're not going to do anything one of 14 no, in you're any not. sport. Yeah, they, they hung around a little bit longer last week because of uh, Stewart with the threes and, and just a better shooting percentage totally. McKenzie gets the loose ball over to King and, and let's reset it, Vancouver, and see what we have. Porter Troop goes to the hole, but he dishes off to Gary Muzzy. Oh, Muzzy's starting to come back into form. I like to see that. He's uh, just great to have out on the floor, and he's a guy who doesn't have to have that ball. He doesn't have to have eight, ten touches a game to be to be productive. So. Well, yeah, he's just ready. He's your blue-collar guy, just ready, or as we say, uh, your ham and eggs guy. Yes. Well, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna switch uh, meals on you. I'm going to say anything after the rebounds in the hustle is gravy. Okay. <laughs> Haven't you heard that term before? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, okay. If you're going to so play the food game So it's funny. I'm thinking here. gravy, and you're thinking ham and eggs. Okay. You want to um, play the food game here, Mike? We'll, 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 we'll yeah, dial that well, up. I'm hungry, so <laughs> we could go ahead and play that. So we have 8:26 left in the Nakashima watch for this game. 97-67 in favor of the Volcanoes. Muzzy goes over to Bloodsaw, over to Porter Troop. And foul on the play. Looks like Troop is going to the line. So we have a couple of storylines. I think you're going to see Cooper get back into the game uh, here pretty soon for Bryson, I'm thinking, to see if he can get a run and keep, keep his uh, productiveness going. And, uh, of course, as I say that, Alex Tiefenthaler gets up. 
<laughs> well, so they, they probably heard you, that's why. I think so. I didn't even know they had a headset, Gary. I thought only Andre, Andre Murray had the headset. And he's on the bench, so that doesn't help. Right. He's sitting next to Kano over there. Kano's enjoying life, and Andre's on his phone.